Hello and welcome back to Dash 28 Live. I am your host Mike Atkins and it is time for the main event. We have the final round match of the quintessentially Quail Cup between Mike Grant and his Trident Realm and John Quail himself and his Basileans. Uh, joining me here to help cover the game, we've got Tom Robinson. Hey Tom, how you doing? Uh, thank you very much for having me. I'm doing pretty well. Excellent. Joey Greek. What's up? And Brenton Williams. Howdy. Uh, let's just get it out of the way. This is John's tournament, and he is on the final table, so I'm sure there's been shenanigans. No. This is actually Surely the first not. game he's played. <laughs> he just slotted himself into the final <laughs> table like Putin style. It's like a Mortal Kombat kind of thing, right? Like when you get to the last match, you have to fight the boss kind of thing. Like, just, you know. Yeah. Whoever the other Sun. final player was just grows wings and it's John. <laughs> right. It's his final form. Um, so they are setting up and uh, they are playing on a set of uh, maps I believe John made for this specific tournament. And. Uh, the scenario they will be playing is Invade, uh, as you can see. They are currently deploying. John is deploying at the bottom of the screen, and Mike is deploying across the top. Uh, and we will have them on to go over their lists as soon as they are done with their deployments. Um, as I said, they're playing Invade. They are currently deploying on the clocks. Um, the QQC, for those of you who don't know, or quintessentially Quail Cup, is a cup-style tournament. Um, so it isn't a everybody plays, you know, every round all the way to the final. It is uh, the players are, are organized into groups of four. For the first three rounds, they play, each, each player plays the other three players in their group. Uh, and then the top two players out of each group um, qualify out of, of the group stage. And then it goes to a single elimination format where I think the the top person in a group plays the, the second player in another group in that first round, that first knockout round. Uh, and from there on, it's just single elimination. So we are down to just two players. Let me bring the bracket up so we can take a quick look at it uh, and see how these two players got here. Um, so as we can see, starting over here, kind of towards the left on the bottom, um, John started playing uh, Mike Zettelmeyer, uh, who's, of course, a club mate of mine, an excellent competitor. Uh, and then he played uh, in the next round, in the, I guess, the quarterfinal round, he played uh, Ulysses Nason, so I don't think I know. Um, and then in the semifinal, he played Juan Pablo. And over on Mike Grant's side... Um, I don't recognize the name of the person Mike played in the first round. Darius, Darius, Diego Jimenez, something like that. There's a big X over it. I don't think I know that guy. Um, and then Mike played Richard Laking. Uh, and then just last round played Jeff Radigan. Um, and now here they are. And since this is a, a kind of knockout style um, bracket, uh, that means that you really don't have to win the games by a lot of points. At this point in the in, in the group rounds, I guess you, you needed to accumulate points so that you could uh, make sure you were in first or second place to get out of the group round. But since then, it's been uh, win, winning by one is, is good enough. Inch or a mile. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Shout out to Laking, though, beating Trace. Yeah. And yeah. if we can bring that up again real quick. Yeah, totally. Um, I think it, it even with all the X's, uh, it brings up a really sort of great thing about these UV tournaments, which is we are looking at players from California, players from Australia, players from England, um, I believe players from either Spain or Argentina, I'm making an assumption there, apologies, players from Texas, like essentially all over the world is being represented in just this like top bracket that played through. Um, and that's that 
uh, power that these UV tournaments have is people all over the world easily just being able to play each other. Um, and that's great to see. So, Absolutely. Uh, and even here at the final, we have a we have an eight hour time difference between the two players, one and one being the UK and the other being in California. Which is the advantage to Mike. He's well rested, <laughs> waking up in a normal time. And uh, as this game goes on, John Quayle, we expect to just get more drunk and more tired. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It looks like they might be done doing their deployments. Uh, so we'll see if we can get them in here. I'll send in a link. Thanks for uh, joining me to help cover the match today, guys. It's always nice to have folks to chat with while we watch these things. We haven't done one of these for a while, so I apologize in advance for any technical issues or rust or incorrect buttons I press or anything like that. Um, I did still have Universal Battle installed, though, and I didn't even need to update it or anything. It was up to date, so <laughs> I don't think I've actually played on UB in quite a while at this point. Uh, so hopefully I remember how to, how to zoom in and select units and highlight things and all. And not and not move their units or their hills. Yeah, right, and not not accidentally drag everything around. Just All saying, right. if a if a phoenix happens to disappear, go U.S. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Disappearing phoenix. What, 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 what have I jumped into? <laughs> What's going on? All right, we got both of them in. Welcome, Let's just Mike. Say and, uh, Mike's check cleared. <laughs> test, test, test. Can you guys hear me? Okay. You yep. can. Yep. Hey guys. Uh, hey, welcome. Um, good luck to you both. We've just been uh, chatting about uh, the tournament format and we showed the, the elimination bracket that you guys went through to get here um, while you guys finished up your deployment, but you're, you're here now. Uh, you guys are going to be playing 2,300 points worth of invades. So I'm going to bring up your, your lists here uh, really quick so that you guys can go through, go through your lists for us uh, and up first we got hey brenton joy greek awesome tom robinson very cool very cool awesome <laughs> uh, this is kings of war celebrities here that's all it is yeah. all all good all good guys right? go. apologies in advance that you're stuck with me and good three, guys three and other Joey. good players <laughs> <laughs> jeez you're a massive Leave player us. brenton come on the self-deprecating is for the British, not for you Americans, right? <laughs> once, once you're off, we'll get the American pride out. We already talked about steal, stealing your phoenixes, which are basically the most American bird ever. That's true. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> like we need a bird, but we need it on fire. Yes. Yeah, I should, I should have made them red, white, and blue. There you go. Anyway, Mike Atkins, good to see you, brother. Yes. Good to see you too, Mr. Grant. Uh, yeah, right. so let's 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 bang through your list here. We got John's list up first. John, if you could read through it for us, and you know, feel free to give us any hints as to how you how you plan to play it or, or how the list works, or if you'd like to keep that a secret so that your opponent doesn't know what your strategy is, that's fine too. <laughs> totally up to you. No pressure. Um, I think I think the gimmick is kind of in the name, isn't it? Let's be honest, right? If you haven't noticed, <laughs> everything's bloody fast. Um, yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, the kind of list I've been running for quite a, quite a bit now, quite a few additions. Um, Tom's usually, usually used, to, used to beating it, so I'm glad I don't have to play him in this tournament. Um, we've got uh, two points of a low heap, one with the Crushing 2 Defence 4 switch, um, which I don't think is as good after playing it for a bit, but uh, it's worked out all right. So a couple of like uh, hard-hitting flying horns, always a good start. Um, so go up Panther uh, Chaff um, alongside two Phoenixes, which in the new edition, Phoenixes are super good. Super good. Make the most of them, guys, I think, is a word I'd use. Um, then what have we got? We've got Abyss Hero with Blade of the Beast Slayer um, uh, with the uh, Alohi giving Elite if they're in the same combat. Elite Vicious hitting on threes. 
damaging on twos is really nice as a you know adding a couple of bits of damage um so i'll go alongside that two arrow logies for the dread and the um the flying and nimble hero option next list this because he is just awesome for 180 points uh he's a you know fast moving nimble tank he's great um and then the pan formation that some people like some people don't i like it so i'm taking it um we've got both strong and sharpness lancer regiments the two more units of chaff in the guard panthers but with a combo of um elite from the from the elohi if i can get them in the same combat it's you know elite vicious fast fast moving nimble glass hammers um they don't tend to survive <laughs> once they hit something but yeah you know give it a go there you go yep and that's going to bring in at 13 drops and a total of 20 unit strength uh, so now let's pop over and let's have a look at uh, mike's trident realm uh, so, Mike, if you could uh, walk us through your list, please. Yeah, you know, uh, people who know me, I like to play with the technical lists. So uh, that also gets me pretty tight on clock sometimes. But, man, I have a lot of fun doing it. So, <laughs> But, uh, you know, in Trident is one of the lists I've really been studying, one of the armies I've been really studying. So I wanted to try to figure out how to best take advantage of the disruption techniques that are, that are in Trident. But Trident doesn't really have a, a lot of tools that all the other armies have. So you end up having to make a pretty balanced list, I think. And uh, that's how I think where the strengths come from and trying to figure out how to use, negotiate the terrain. And and so um, I've actually, I, you know, I went with a simpler list than I normally go with uh, at bigger events, but I wanted to try the River Guard Tree Leapers really, which is where this list was was kind of, how do I, how at best I could use those units. And I'm pretty surprised with them. I, I think uh, you'll find that they're actually really good. And uh, people should try them at 110 points. They they can do a lot with their uh, crushing strength and snare and fly ability and their speed. So it's 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 pretty and their pathfinder. So they they they're pretty solid. Um, the rest of it just has a couple of hammers and I like I said balanced. I also think the Leviathan's bane. So if if we don't play Trident, the Trident Trident realm got a really big advantage from the point changes in the recent release. So. The, the um, Leviathan Bane is significantly cheaper, so uh, I wanted to see how that impacted also being an additional piercing. Um, but I'll go through the list here really quick if, if um, you guys want to just go through that, so I realize I'm getting you guys to skip around. Um, so uh, the mm -hmm. Nyanid Snares I went with start with first. I gave him the Chalice of Wrath because I have a tendency to over overcommit them, and so I wanted to give them Fury so they could keep fighting. Um, I actually used them in the last game that I was, I think I streamed here on, on, I used in snares and, um, they wavered and I think that caused a, a big problem. So I've been using Fury ever since. Um, so two river guard, uh, tree leavers. So, uh, the two troops, uh, they're pretty affordable and they do their job. Uh, I got an ocean born Naya worm riders. I gave them strength because they really need to crack stuff. Uh, 18 attacks is just enough. And uh, CS2 is just enough, and their regeneration keeps them on the table. Um, and they're pretty flexible with Nimble, and I think that's the gotcha. With their 1618, they can stay on the table for a lot of the game. So it's been doing pretty well with that. Um, for a lot of people who use Trident, I think you're going to see the Dam Bursters. They're, they're pretty solid. Uh, with 1517, they can, they can be wavered, uh, but... Um, I think both of them will, on average, do about 10 wounds if on the attack. So I chose two of those. One with Sharpness, and the other one has Shannon Hate. I gave both of them Poison Frog for that, for that one time um, uh, Brutal. So it makes them pretty solid. And, uh, yeah, so they've got Strider, so they don't run through the terrain as much, but uh, they, they don't. They kind of ignore it for the most part. Uh, so they hit pretty hard. Uh, then I've got the three Leviathan Banes which I think are pretty solid. Uh, I think uh, in this modern uh, zone where, where uh, the meta is really fast right now, I think, I think we can see that in the meta and just about all the events right now, everybody's playing the fast stuff, whether it's flying or, or heavy cab or, or wherever. Uh, it, and I think that's fun. It, it makes an exhilarating game and faster games as well. Uh, so I think uh, it's interesting to try something that's a little counter meta uh, and go with some Leviathan Banes, uh, 
we don't see them as much in this list. It's a technical part of my list because I can pull people out of the terrain or get them closer to me uh, and use a few mechanics. So that's kind of fun. You know, we'll see how that works in this game. I've got a knucker, so that's kind of more my flex piece. Um, so the the knucker I think is a pretty common list in Trident, and it really kind of is a stopgap. It allows us to deal with some lists and be a little more flexible. I've got two Thule Mythicans, which I think everybody pretty much uses. Uh, and really, it's a superior multi-role piece uh, with an 11-13 nerve. It's super fast with wild charge. Most people forget that they can do that. Uh, they, they don't have Pathfinder, but in a lot of cases, they, they still do their job with five attacks, hitting on threes or fours, depending on the scenario. Uh, and them having ensnare makes them pretty solid. Um, so I gave them both Lightning Bolt, which is the weird thing. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't do something like that. Why would you do that? But um, when you combine that with all of the, the other things in the army, you'll see how the synergy works, I think, in the list. Um, so I've got Ector, which is a, a, a very tight question to use Ector in, in the game. He's really slow. Um, but he does have some unique abilities that I do appreciate. So, you know, Phalanx and Ensnare is a big one. And uh, the crack and maw rule is, is pretty good. Again, we're talking about a technical list, so I do have a little bit to, of trying to explain a little bit why I picked him. And then, of course, I've got the Depth Horror Eternal, which I just really love that it's an inspiring. It has uh, CS2, hits on threes, uh, and then it doesn't waver. I mean, I think, I think we were using this guy before, back when he was a dash. He was just amazing back then uh, with his dash nerve. And, and even now, with Fury and 1416, he's really solid. So in defense four, he's, he still gets kind of wavered every now and then. Um, but uh, I did give him lightning bolt to uh, participate with the Thule Mythicans in, in their um, damage application throughout the game. And, and I think all three have been really clutch to the whole tournament, actually. So that's my list. Cool. Awesome. And that'll bring you in at 14 drops and 17 units strength. Uh, so thanks for walking us through your lists, guys. I'm going to bring your your UB room up really quick uh, and have you guys talk us through how you deployed uh, and then we will uh, wish you guys luck and, and you can get started with your game. So uh, I see Mike, you're deployed across the top and John's deployed across the bottom. Uh, so Mike, if you could walk us through your deployed units real quick, starting over on the on the left side. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I got the ensnares. They were about my ninth drop in this. So I waited very to the end of the drops. I got the ensnares on the left. I've got both dam bursters supporting them, uh, and have uh, and I put I, now for as far as the ensnares go, I always put them on a flank because they don't like being flanked uh, with their um, with their ensnare ability. Um, you always want to keep that in play, so I'm just trying to make sure that 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 I keep my ensnare in front. So the dam bursters are their speed uh, with a 14 and uh, kind of trying to get across the table. I'm trying to actually keep a lot of my unit strength together. Uh, in this, uh, I didn't win the roll off here, so I was I got the second side, and I think uh, the, the lower is the better choice. Um, so I had to try to make the most of it. Uh, there's this big rock that's in the center. I'm going to try to anchor in between, so I'm going to try to keep that as my defending piece. And so I've got faster pieces that can run around the rock. Um, so I've got uh, now. If we look here a little closer, that's Ector. That's right there on the edge of the woods, right in front of the dam burster there. Then I've got. Um, the Mythican, one of the Mythicans that's right next to him, uh, that is the Defense 6 Mythican. And then there's another one that um, has the Stang Stone, and that's on the other side with the uh, Worm Riders. And then I've got the ins, uh, the uh, Nucker there right next to him. I've got a River Guard that's going to jump over the rock if I can. And then I've got the Horde just to kind of be an anchor for, uh, for the Inspiring uh, in the center there. And then I've got another Mythicin, which I covered, and then the Worm Riders, um, which was an early place for me. I wanted to see where he was going to try to focus, and uh, he went with a split um, sides, which I think, openly speaking, kind of favors me, because um, I can I can try to focus my army on just one of his guys. But considering his so, army is so fast, it really doesn't matter. Um, everything, I think, is either speed 9 or speed 10 in his whole list. So um, I'm really just going to... The Phoenix is running speed eight. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, I'm, I've, got a, I've got some work done out, cut out for me. I only have eight scoring units, really, when I look at this. So I have to think about that ahead. Um, and then, of course, I've got the three bolt throwers in the far right, which are just 
you know, he wants to come at them. Yay. <laughs> All right. Great. And uh, John, you are deployed. You are deployed across the bottom here. So if you could run us through your uh, deployed units real quick. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I can split mine into two kind of groups. So we've got Panthers with Sharpness on the left alongside the Loki with um, the Ram. Uh, the couple of Phoenixes, which kind of went down early because they, they got a bit of flexibility about what I want to be able to do with them. And a little uh, Loki tucked alongside them just to give them a bit of inspiring. Uh, then two little Panther units hiding behind them, cowering from all these lightning bolts. And then on the right-hand side, I've got my slightly hittier but lower defense Elohi with the strong Panther Lancers behind him. Uh, Naeus, so you can see over the hill and peer at those guys. There's nobody can sneak up on me from there. And then um, some Panthers and uh, the Abbess on the right-hand side there. Oh, Elohi with a fixed as one, just hiding in between everything. All right. Awesome. Uh, thanks so much, guys. Uh, good luck to both of you. I'm going to let you go get started with your game now. We'll be we'll be watching here, and uh, we will see you back here uh, when we are done. Be kind. You're always <laughs> kind. Come on. Okay. Right. <laughs> see you guys in a bit. All right, guys. See you guys in the back. All right. So they are just about to get started. So um, deployment's kind of interesting. Um, as Mike has chosen basically to, to, to deploy almost everything to one side of a piece of terrain um, and brought three bolt throwers and left them pretty much undefended. But as fast as John is, like he's, if he actually wants to get rid of them, I feel like he's going to go knock those things out by like the second round. Um, what do you guys think about these, these deployments? So obviously there's a big sort of lane that those Leviathan Banes are set up in to shoot through, but yeah. due to the nature of John's army, it's more just denying some space to land. <laughs> um, yeah. Because he can almost skip that entire area when it comes to fighting. Um, in terms of defending them, I think, yeah, I mean, he has some characters with Lightning Bolt that can kind of the, the obvious path is he has a set of Panther Lancers, John does in the bottom right corner, that are deployed exactly to go forward, pivot, and go straight up and sort of just run right at them if he wants. Um, and they can either shoot at those Panther Lancers hoping to uh, get them, uh, or they're going to charge the next turn like they have range. Um, but Lightning Bolts could possibly defend against that, so we'll see. Um, but I also think John can just, for a lot of this, just not play in sight of those Leviathan's Bane until he's actually charging. So Interesting. Uh, Mike uh, took first turn. Yep, Mike has won the roll for first turn, so he will get to shoot anything he can see. And away we go. Which That's going to bring us top of turn one. That is going to be Mike Grant's first turn. So something this list tries to do uh, is it will shoot you, pull you up onto terrain like a hill or out of terrain if you are in it, and then shoot everything else in the list it has at you in that open position. And in later turns, it will then try and wind blast you back to where you were or worse. <laughs> so it, it sort of scorpions you from Mortal Kombat. It does like get over here. Hits you with everything it can, um, which this variant has less shooting than some of the other variants I've seen from him that have a lot of uh, heart piercers or other stuff. Um, but it, the idea is it sort of pulls you into a position you don't want to be in, hits you with a bunch of stuff you didn't think you were getting hit with that turn, and then sometimes returns you right back to where you were, were worse off. Um, right. So it, it does a lot of tricksy things like that. Um, you know, pulling you off a hill when you thought you would have a thunderous charge, pushing you off a hill so he can get a thunderous charge, um, or later, you know, just a lot of a lot of tricksy stuff. Um, with this variant of the list, uh, with no sirens and no sort of longer range versions of it, um, we'll see how it works uh, with the dam busters, sticky tongue, and some of the other stuff kicking around. 
uh, but it does try and push and pull its opponent a lot of different ways, which will be awkward. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very elite list over on John's side, and only thirteen drops. Um, everything is very fast, so you know I'm. I find that that style of, of like I'm gonna manipulate where you are on the table by blowing your round or pulling your round, that style of list really, really interesting. But I don't know whether John's list is quite what Mike wants to face, since it's so to. fast. Imagine not yeah. on invade. Not on invade, no. Yeah. yeah. Especially when the fast army has a unit strength advantage, that puts a lot of pressure on Mike to delete, you know, three or four good units. Right? He has to kill both a low high if he wants to really win. Yeah. Um, whereas Quail can quite honestly get away with just stalling. And if he kills the two leapers and a knucker, you can probably ride that. So yeah, I'm I'm unsure. It's like there's part of me that says this is exactly the army Mike doesn't want to see, but then there's part of me that thinks a small amount of lightning bolt, uh, if this had had, I don't know, knights, or if this had been a different variant with some tougher stuff, like the Panthers and the Panther Lancers can get removed in one turn of shooting. Um, right. Because anything that survives like double Phoenix is, is iron resolve, et cetera, is bringing it, bringing it right back. <laughs> um, but he actually does have enough, even though it's not a ton of shooting, like there's enough, with, you know, sticky tongue and lightning ball and the, the war machines and et cetera, that it could remove some of these softer, more fragile units. And that's something he might want to see. Uh, I just fear for, you know, Besides the ensnares, most of Mike's army can't take a punch, um, especially a, a you know a low he plus Panther Lancers elite whatever kitted up nonsense is coming in. Um, yeah. But he has all of those like characters and um, other pieces that are there to kind of block up the charge lanes and prevent the damn busters. And there are. Uh, worm riders from getting hit and those can pop pretty much anything in john's army if they come in right so we'll see yeah if i was looking at this from john's side i would go i'm already three unit strength up i just need to deny him the ability to kill me mm -hmm. and the right side looks very easy to do that in just... sure yeah I mean, Nias has his head up, right? He does. He, does. So he can get shot. He's going to get pulled onto that hill. Hopefully, it's the, the goal from them and shoot him. But the problem is Nias, you know, I think I've said this before. He's a, he's a big jerk. Uh, I had to face him a lot in my local games. And he's 15, 17, nerve, defense 5. He is a regiment of knights on a tiny base. <laughs> while walking around just not dying it's like a frostfang lord basically yeah. yeah he's he doesn't have the offensive output but just for like the ability to tank don't be fooled by the base size he's he's a real unit so it's not easy to kill with lightning bolt yeah this is one of the weird times where nias taking heal would have been good But they're, they're interesting lists. They're not the total norm. I know John says he plays this a lot, but seeing the Panther Lancers formation is not the norm. And then Mike is always coming up with weird lists, uh, which are super fun to see. Um, he's a bit of a, a crafting person on that, where he thinks deeply about something and then makes a incredibly complicated multi-piece list that's really fun to watch, and you're not always sure how it's going to play. So... And they're moving over to shooting. Yep. Looks like a miss. And the bolt throwers don't have ignore obscured, right? No. 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 Yeah, 
Yeah, I'll be curious to see how the Panther formation goes. Um, I'd been testing some Vasilean builds with like Triple Phoenix, to Alohi, and then Panther Chariots, going with the Sister of Chariot instead. So you get like a Chariot Regiment with Helm of the Ram, so it's 15 attacks, Thunder 3, Elite, Vicious. And um, like, it does a lot of work. So I'll be curious to see how the Defense 3 versions stack up. Uh, looks like some putting some hits on Nias uh, with cover. And I think that 10 might have been the nerve check, um, which, of course, will not get him because he's 15-17, as we've just discussed. But it's 13. Uh, so that was very, very close for our first turn waiver. Um, and then he iron resolved back down to two, as you do when you're Basileia. And he, he uh, chose not to pull him forward, it looks like. Yeah, it was an odd choice because he, he, he put the first one into the hard with J-Boots, which, I mean, there's no real point splitting his shooting with Basileia because, like, you, you'll you do, what, two damage maybe, then you're sort of back down to one, so you're only doing one, actually. So it, it made sense to just put the first ball thrower into Nias, pull him on, and then just throw the other two into him afterwards. Mm -hmm. been right, after he's, not, after he's not in cover anymore. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he might have been hoping for a lucky hit on them to pull them. Forward, well, they couldn't pull forward because the Ur. Yeah, they would they would bump the Ur a little. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe he would have gotten the second one of line of sight. I don't know. Uh, so we see he has thrown his Abbas on Panther all the way up. Special special forces mission. Right. I'm still expecting potentially. Like this is kind of the turn where we see whether he's going to fight him straight up or he's going to Joey Greek and just hide until. <laughs> You know, and I'm not I'm not putting a value judgment on either of those two. Just uh, different strategies. Like, is he going to maneuver to like straight up fight, or is he going to hide a little more and not you be got scared of that round? All of nimble defense three and four army. You better not be just straight up fighting. That is not the point. And then there's a certain range at which Mike really wants to be playing, um, which is a little closer than I think John will let him get. <laughs> that sort of sticky tongue, um, basically like sticky tongue range. Like he wants to be in sticky tongue range where he can pull stuff around, do damage, like push it back with wind blast, do all kinds of tricky stuff like yeah. that. Um, and part of me thinks Mike's army is set up to just skip that entire phase. <laughs> just fly, yeah. fly right over that range and come in. So we'll we should see. probably also go over um, sticky tongue is the dam buster special rule. They have enthrall mm -hmm. six, but it's got a 12 inch range instead of the regular 18. And it does damage, mm -hmm. right? And it does damage. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actors wind blast also does damage. So, so that's part of the idea is you it's can sticky right tongue someone in and then wind blast them right back out or vice versa or wind blast one unit of a double charge back while you sticky tongue another one closer. Yep. Here comes the support. Just whiplash everybody. Interesting that Quail's going really far. I would have expected him to try to get a little closer, but um, is he in 20 on the Panther troop? Okay, so he's yeah. he's got one, and then the abbess can yeah do whatever. Okay. Uh, he's got he's got his choice of all three of the uh, at this point. Right, and okay, he could just be sending nice up there as well. Well, it's if he shuts down that corner, and then he has right. actual units up there faced inward that makes Mike's ability to move forward with any units on that other side, um, basically stop at the rock. <laughs> right, right, right. And then it also makes the, um, I'm going to get their names wrong every time, but the Worm Rider River, whatever. I get them confused with the Dam Busters, but the, the Worm Riders uh, are now suddenly making choices that they don't want to make around where they face. Because Gur Panthers, Gur Panthers in the flank are no joke. They're not friendly. Yeah. 
Yeah. Your Panthers, six attacks at on fours with Vicious and Pathfinder, so they don't care about running through the train. Yep. So it becomes the 12 attacks, fours. Yep. If you're coming in on a flank, that's uh, ignoring any kind of defensive stuff, which they don't have anyways, but I always think about with Trident Realms. If you can hit yeah. them in the side, they have naturally low defense already, so, you know, it's it's fours and fours with Vicious. That's... Yeah. Three three extra damage into that combat, maybe four. It is. Um, Worm Riders do have four up regen, though, so it's going to be hard to keep. It's going to be hard to make the wounds stick. But if he can waver them one turn, that would that'd be kind of a big deal. Well, you're looking at something in the front too, right? Like, sure. On that same side, he has Panther Lancers and Alohi. So. This is the bottom of turn one in the finals of the quintessentially Quail Cup in 2023. Um, after this tournament, I believe Mike Zettelmeyer has announced that he's planning on running a, a UB event as well. Ooh. Yeah, that, that felt very much like a like a crackhead going for that itch. Like he was he's like on his revenge guy. tour. Are there right. are there any UB tournaments running right after this and no one answered fast enough? And he's like, I'm making one. Right. I'm gonna have my own tournament with blackjack and hookers. I I need to keep doing this. And if no one else right. has got something for me to sign up for right now, I am making one. I saw he's making some really cool maps. Yeah, I That's I read cool. just the brief of it that it was sort of more terrain dense. Mm -hmm. Um and that seemed to yeah, and they, they have like varying heights and stuff. So you've got like height four, height yep. five hills, and Ooh. things like that. Yep. And he's planning on doing things like putting putting terrain on top of terrain. So, you know, walls on top of hills, forests on top of hills, stuff like that. So, Hector got hexed. Easiest way to deal with him. Yep. Yep. Every time I see hex in a list, I'm like, I need more hex in my lists. And then I don't. <laughs> but it always. There's so many just like annoying units that you're like, well, you could hex it. And you're like, oh yeah. I feel like I, I sort of called that, but sort of didn't when when uh, whatever edition that was or fact that was the that updated. I was like, is the scroll caddy going to be a thing now in Kings of War? Is is everybody going to have dude with hex thrown into his list? Is like, well, this is what I got to do to shut down whatever annoying you know library spells. My, my opponent brings. And it's not as common as I thought it was going to be. The the thing I run into is it's just that. It's still that luck of the draw. Like, there will be games where Hex is basically just turned Ooh. off. Um, but or, or, like, there's times where you feel, you know, you're fighting triple Mind Screech and other stuff, and you're like, I Hexed your Mind Screech, and he's like, cool. <laughs> Got multiple. Right. Right. <laughs> Good luck. Luckily, I, luckily yeah. I have two more. Yeah, and and that one will just still keep doing things because whatever it took damage, you're never going to see it again. It's, it's night star because it's behind three hard scarecrows. Good luck. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's like put as uh, much damage on that mind screech as you want. It's uh. All right, so fire sparks from the phoenixes, but six wounds on the that sentry unit of tree leapers, but a three rolled for nerve. That will be frosty. Yeah, that was a pretty good opening round of shooting. Yeah, Phoenixes uh, do stuff now. I go great. Five hits scary, through cover scary. is a uh, rough. But I find hex usually like the armies that take hex have someone like an Earl High or a Dracon Lord or like a 150, 160 point combat hero that scores, and that's where you can slot 15 points on hex. Yeah, and it's all all of the rounds where they are not doing something like they're maneuvering. Yeah. Or they're threatening, yeah. and you're like, That's... and also I'm tall, so I hex that thing. Right. Yep. I had it on a dwarf king on large beast, uh, that basically like made two of my tournament games once just easy, because it just shut mm -hmm. down. Yeah. Like the the caster that ran the opposing army, he just. <laughs> they're like, isn't he going to come off that hill and do something? I'm like, he is doing something. <laughs> He's just a hex caddy for this game. 
Yeah, I know. I've played around with it with like on Dread Fiends because you like you Dread Fiend, you hex the caster, and then you've got Shakira that the next turn to just go clean it up if they do something with it, mm-hmm. or at least lock it down. Um, but yeah, you you want like a large cav or large infantry scoring unit, then hex yeah. feels good. Or if you yeah. ever play Rift Forge Dorks, yeah, <laughs> then you're just psyched. Hex the shrine. Right. <laughs> It can't hide. It's like the biggest thing in their army. <laughs> it's just has a giant light light up neon sign above the DJ booth saying "Hex me." Okay. All right, over to the top of turn two now. Back to Mike Grant at the top. I have a feeling we're going to see them do that same move next turn. <laughs> Get to that wall. <laughs> and then don't die. Very straightforward plan. It's um, possibly a little bit risky, though, because you can just put those Gur Panthers on the wall and then send in both the regiment and the horde. But they've got an art like shot at doing them in one. Aha, uh-huh, and he's putting that there so that can happen. By the looks of it. Yeah. I kind of like tree leapers. I think uh, they're really cool for what they do. Yeah. yeah. They have almost made me start a Trident Realms army like five or six times. Yeah. Because They seem like, really useful. Who doesn't want to play with crazy ninja frogs? Mm-hmm. Like, it seems amazing. Yeah. And then, like, I look at what I have to do for the rest of the army and I get less interested. But, <laughs> you know, there's there's... Oftentimes, I'm like, time to make a tree leaper based list, and then I, I give up again. But ninja frogs are cool. Yeah. They're they're pretty neat in their other armies, too. Like, um, you can put them in Sylvankin instead of your Forest Shambler regiment, so you can take a flying and snare unit. That's. They have some pretty cool utility. That's good. Yeah, looking at, the, looking at their stats and thinking, like, I like Wraith troops a whole bunch, and they're speed seven and fly, and only have 10 attacks. It's just like. More fragile. Yeah. Not non shambling. Not shambling, yeah. The shambling no is shenanigans, huge. but fast. Yeah. True. Wraith, Wraith surge shenanigans are just part of the reason you take them. They really are. And like the the number of times I have I have tricked people into thinking that the Wraith troops were just chaff for like the soul reavers and whites behind them. I'm like, no no no, you don't understand. Those two little troops of Wraiths are probably gonna get more work done than the hammer units behind them. Because they will they will surge into a flank and you'll you'll have forgotten that they're striders or something like that. Like they'll pull off something clutch that people didn't say, Oh shit, I thought they were just a screen. Like mm-mm. no, no. So when when Mike talks about having a technical list, this is where the sort of you know, he has fragile units, he doesn't have a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so this sort of precise positioning is what's required. Like he is going to spend some time on this turn knowing that he is in the threat range of Basilians um, and very try and carefully use his Ector, his Thule Mythicans who, you know, you read the name and you think they're a caster and then you read the profile and you're like, no, they're little plugs. They just get in the way of stuff and kind of punch things. That's actually what they do. Um, All of those different pieces, the, the tree leapers, everything needs to be super careful and, he can't he can't leave a gap in his armor this round or else you know it could be game losing so yeah being very careful and if a smarter player than me like joey or tom spot some potential gaps in his armor please call them out well i'm gonna assume that he's gonna fill them (laughs) um but yeah that's part of why i really think that just the john shifting his lines to the right just being like, I only have to kill two unit strength or so and just ensure that I can throw away three or four and maintain my win. So that's what you think he's doing. It's just like, I'm never going to fight those ensnarers. I'm never going to fight your damn that's monsters I would if I don't do. have to. Uh, if I just keep fire sparking these uh, tree leapers, they're going to be gone next turn. It's like, not so much like only fire sparking, but like, say the panther lancers and the aloha here you're willing to throw them away it's like i just want to arrange a time where i can kill a damn buster horde Mm -hmm. 
and then that's an acceptable trade because I'll still win my scenario. Yeah. Because I started with a scenario advantage. So it's how you spend that advantage. And he, he does look like he is in a very good position to encircle and defeat eventually those uh, worm riders. Like Yeah, I guess John also has the advantage of having how much unit strength? Can he just get across he, the table from he has pretty much anywhere? To Mike's seventeen. So Right, but like how much of it is so mobile in those like one unit strength flying things or fast things that like you no know, and, and he's going on the bottom of the turn, so like whatever doesn't matter what, what Mike does at the very end of the game if John wants to add what three to his score, he can just fly some Phoenixes and and, and like enter a low just barely over the line. Um He's got eight one unit strength dudes. Right. Although I wouldn't expect the Grip Panthers to survive very long. The one on the right might, um, assuming that Mike isn't going to shoot it. He's going to shoot Nias instead. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to have seen one of the Thules just babysitting those... Um... Leviathan bot throw. So it could have done what the Abyss did, which is run forward into range. Instead, he could be warding off the Abyss and forcing yeah. him to commit more to getting rid of the bot throws. Because mm -hmm. fundamentally, like if if John's committing two or three units to killing those bot throws, it takes three turns to do it. They're not really going to do much for the rest of the game. And yes, they're going to score. But if you can use that time to win on the left and get, you know, right, 14 of your units strength across, and they've only got nine of theirs on the other side because you won on the left side because you wasted so much time with. Bolt throws which don't score, you know, that's an acceptable trade. So I'd have liked to see the Thule Mythic and babysitting the bolt throws, I think, just to ward the Abyss off or give us something to think about. Yeah, because if you're, like, from John's perspective, if you're going into this and you say, I want to kill one horde and then preserve my army, those Worm Riders are kind of the prime target. Hmm. Yeah, they're a bit, uh, again, the. Worm Riders are a little bit isolated for me as well. I think what what are they actually doing? Are they is their job there to protect the bolt throwers? Because uh, like I tend to, I used to do it all the time with Honor Guard. I'd use Honor Guard to babysit volley guns because people would obsess over volley guns. They go running at them and they say, "Well, here's a hard Honor Guard, you know, yeah, um, have fun." So there's there's merit to that. It's just usually the, for me the volley guns are like integral in, uh, in the middle of my lines so yep. that's fine but they're out on the corner now and you're thinking is it worth i mean another nimble so they can just bugger off if they feel like it which i think he's doing which, yep. is, which is what he's <laughs> doing yeah he's already pulled the mythic yeah. back to the middle but that's yeah. super dangerous to have your you know he's going to use try and use this hill to to screen himself but well, he's taller. Too tall. Okay, then never mind. Yeah, they're high, they're high four, yeah. yeah. He came back because the Aero High had a flank on him, and the other Aero yeah. High was in the front, and yeah. that's dodgy yeah. enough that you wouldn't the want to chance it. Panther guys might also have a charge. Yeah, now he's got to give friends. Ooh. Uh, yes, they currently do. Oh, that's scary. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand the sort of... Uh, volley gun reference the thing for me about volley guns that's a huge difference between them and other artillery is that if you walk something slow and tough at volley guns volley guns will eventually just take them down like they have yeah. enough consistent hitting um that if one thing comes at them you can drop them uh because of the swinginess of the the shooting for these it's not true necessarily like they can't just stop something on their own they have to aid other shooting. Yeah. What's um, the arc on those worm riders? Assuming he's going to leave them. Oof. Um, currently, <laughs> yeah, those panther right uh, are in the flank, easily mm -hmm. and in range. Yeah. I hope uh, he's not Mike, forgetting their speed. You, he's you he's not done moving. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. Yeah, he's he's definitely seen it. Yeah. <laughs> um. And yeah, the, the volley gun positioning is normally people talk a lot about like, oh, I just put them on a flank and they deny space. And it's like, no, you can be a lot trickier with that. And if you leave just enough to defend them that they have to commit more, it can. Yeah, I, I love triple volley gun. <laughs> it's good fun. I mean, because the, 
the old radialist when you could have halving sorcerers with windblast seven you could do the kind of thing that obviously mike's uh, trident realms can do which is you you shoot it you push it back out of range which is yeah. great fun if you could pull it off it's so much fun um because like kings of war that you can do these kind of things with kings of war but they don't often reward you know mm -hmm. that kind of play um it's a lot of hits eight hits winning on twos yeah yeah that's good six wins Six wounds on Nias. Oh, eight and eight. That's not it. Three is bad. Yeah. Well, he's wavered anyway because it's an eight and an eight. Unless they have shattering or something. Do they have shattering? I don't think so. Then uh, it's just wavered. Yeah. Should be a waver, yeah. Hmm. Uh, Damn no, things headstrong strong as well. Yeah. Because yeah, he's a knight yeah. regiment. <laughs> <laughs> All by his lonesome. Yep. I've I've faced that nonsense a lot, and it's he is just an annoying piece to deal with. Mm. Um, and cheaper than an Alohi. One of the weird things. Where is he? Did, he used to be cheaper than an Aralohi. He is, yeah. I think he's 180. Okay. It's 200 on an Aralohi. Yeah. And that is a they successful headstrong wall. Ninety percent of the time, you pass that head to the three for headstrong. Yeah. Uh, it's so like, it's like will the... be headstrong and can do whatever he wants this turn. Yeah, I I find it, and now he won't pass it because we're talking about this. But I find it to be the opposite of plugging in a USB, where like a USB okay. should be fifty percent of the time, and I fail every <laughs> single time I try and put it yeah. in first time. And then you flip it around and it still doesn't work. Yeah, Nias Ni right. Headstrong is the, the like it, he just passes. He's fearless. Uh, yep. So here go the yep the charges into the guns. I don't know if he was flank, but yeah, probably. Did it fit in the front just about? This will be interesting because it's one of the ones with um, attacking war engines where everyone just assumes you kill it because you're on triple attacks. Well, actually, you know, the Girth Panthers aren't going to do it, and the Abyss probably won't. The amount of times I've had body guns survive and they had no right to survive is, you know, high. Yeah. So that'll be interesting. It, if, it, if they can hold two of those, like two of those body, um, body guns, I've got body guns on the brain now. <laughs> um, Harpoon launch a thing which you survive, then that's a decent amount of time wasted, at least for Mike. Yeah. Even though I probably would have rather have seen them more protected to get better use out of them. You needed, you needed something to just slow them down because they literally just turn two are, are in them. Like, mm. just at least get them to turn three. Because what it for me, what it opens up now is that whole area that was sort of Mike, I think, was a little bit counting on being like safe space to his flank is now just going to be riddled with. Alohi, Panther Lancers, mm. etc., setting up to come in from the side, um, yeah, and and paying no price for it. Like they are not open to any yeah. shooting, any lucky waivers, nothing. It's just like, well, your your shooting is shut down in that corner. Mm. We're coming out to play now. He could yeah. turn a bunch of lightning bolt that way, maybe, but a bunch of lightning bolt is still like six to nine with cover because he's shooting or or no cover if he sets it up right. But yeah. Hmm. The is he looking at sending the phoenix in just to um, tie them up, lock it in place? Yeah, yeah. I mean that would be a bold move. It'd be fun where you just like stick him in place, and then you know he's hmm. dead next turn. And I think phoenix I would are... I would do the Uralohi instead because of what Mike just showed with the uh, arc of the other dam busters. The Uralohi might yeah. fit completely yeah. out of arc. Yeah. And you would only have to worry about a don't, full method. Uh, I don't think he's could... looking the other way. Care so much because I think those worm riders aren't long for this world unless they find a way to escape. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. The phoenixes just need to kill that troop. That's probably what he's really going to be after. Ping a couple more wounds on it. Yeah, they're already up to six, and they're only ten, twelve. So, poor ninja turtles. Poor ninja turtles. <laughs> ninja frogs. 
Ah, see, this is my problem because now I'm thinking I'm sure someone makes STLs for Ninja Turtles. I'm 100% sure of it. If Steve well. Hildrew can print off a Gungan <laughs> army, definitely. Yep. I don't. I don't like to talk about that army. <laughs> definitely go with like an '80s or like early '90s uh, cartoon, like Battle Toads, and uh, no, it'd just be rat, Ninja, and then you can have Ninja like. Turtle. I don't know. Your knuckers can be like Bebop and Rocksteady. Yep, totally. <laughs> Thule Mythican is Shredder, or not Shredder? Uh, Splinter. Splinter. This is, yeah, actor is Shredder. I'm. This is all coming together. <laughs> I actually really like actor is Shredder. <laughs> <laughs> He's just standing there taking hits. <laughs> like... All right, folks watching at home. Clearly, your job now is to find these STLs and paste them in the comments of this video. <laughs> Um, we're all bad influences for Britain. Yeah, just one. I normally, <laughs> I, I legitimately have to curate my like media consumption to not start new armies. Like, there's movies I can't watch. <laughs> like, I can't watch Kingdom of Heaven as much as I want to, or else I'll yeah. just start like an army for no. You immediately like, order Fireforge, like like another human knight <laughs> army, which I obviously need. So. Yeah, there's certain like band band movies in my own home that I love but can't watch until I finish projects. I wonder what range band John's looking at with these Panthers. Or he might, is he looking to just run off with them? Like, just leave the entire left flank and just play a safe scenario in? I think it's the Knucker. It might be the Knucker's 18-inch bubble that he's trying to get out of. But we are getting we are getting to a range where Panthers ain't tough and a bunch of damaging enthrall and lightning bolt. And you know, if you bring six to nine lightning bolt and two of the damn buster tongue shots into them, can just drop them. So we're yeah. we're getting near that range where it's Suddenly, Mike's army yep. actually starts doing, doing uncomfortable damage. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the 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 Alohi horde on the hill is within range of these uh, worm riders, and obviously the Panther lancers here are currently in their flank. He flew the Alohi all the way up, but so far has left him looking up the table, uh, which I guess is just a he didn't have another turn. Another, yeah, another I think pivot he had left to turn them. I think he had to turn them to get that angle. Um, maybe. Yeah. And there's no real way to wind blast both of these units back out of range. So yeah, those, those worm riders are going to have a, a bad time next round. He's also potentially cutting off, I don't know, like if the worm riders did a pivot and back up to try and like escape some charge ranges and get that Alohi unit in the front. Um he's now got that angle also covered. <laughs> so. He does have to move his central or low high though, because it's currently in range of the worm yeah. riders, like, just. If you just hover over it, yeah, if you hover over it, it'll draw yeah. a little life and give you a distance, which is quite cool. This would have been really useful when like COVID hit. It's a shame that yeah. they've had it all this afterwards. It's it's a right. shame that UB got a lot better when less people are playing it. But yeah, it's good. It's an amazing tool that I don't use enough. So apologies to anyone I'm about to play on UB in the next few weeks. Uh, it's going to be slow and rusty. It's all right. There's there's clocks in it now. Yeah. I know. There goes all my ad revenue from people using the clock on Dash 28. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you write those clocks after Pages and Alex's like games in the semifinal? Is that when it happened? I wrote them specifically before I tried to run my Vanguard. tournament. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're okay. UB Vanguard. Yeah. Yeah. So that would have been April before April. I think it was like March. When I launched it. Yeah, I wish it existed when I first played UB. Um, 
My horror story is I had a two-hour first turn for my opponent. You're, you're going to name names? No, but I did not win. <laughs> as it turns out. They, they attritioned you. <laughs> it's really hard to think about kinks for that long. It's, it's an old pool shark move. You just play as slow as you can until the other person loses patience. Yeah. All right, so John has moved on to shooting. Yep, so he backed the stuff out. Chaffed uh, what he had to. Yep. yep. And that is the snake eyes on the river guard. Man. With eight wounds on them. Uh, and an eight, that's going to be a nine. That's not going to be a waiver on the other ones. He's getting really good luck here. <laughs> right. Getting all these so unfortunate the, nerve rolls out of the way early. Yeah. So the So the tree leapers get to do what they want. Yep. Go, um, go tree leap. Oh, do leap some trees. All right, so combat's over here. We will see if he murders the hell out of some bolt throwers. We're rooting for those, uh, rooting for the Ninja Turtles. Now the, he's in on fives here, right? Because they're not striders. Yeah. Two wins. Didn't get a 10. All right, so one is still there. Oh, that was vicious. Still that didn't was the get a vicious ten. Yeah, still didn't get a 10. So it's not going to shoot, but it's still there. But yep. I don't know that those Panthers really want to do anything other than hang out across the table where they're scoring and chew on bolt throwers for the next couple turns anyway. Uh, it's going to be the Abbas. Hits. Eight wins with a reroll. Nine wins. There we go. Pretty close. Very dead. And a six rolled for nerve. So that will be first blood to John. Getting rid of one of those. To the Abyss. Bane. To the Abyss. I also, I enjoy that first blood in this game was uh, within Mike's deployment zone on turn two. <laughs> 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 like, Ooh, that is that a fast is a army. You're right. Low roll out of Nias and a low nerve. And a three. Wait, the nice just failed to kill. Yep. yep. Both are... <laughs> so that Abbas is straight mocking him right now. Like, what? Yeah. What? What's your problem, bro? That, that your Abbas up? is looking at him like shame, <laughs> shame on you. Shame. Sorry, you're muted, Tom. If you're talking about how you should never roll double <laughs> ones for uh, war machines. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was just saying that's the exact reason why, um, like, using war engines as a trap sometimes is a, is a useful play. Because now Naeus is stuck there for another turn. It is the bane of your existence when um, that happens, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Conveniently, Naeus is nimble, so he can still pivot and, and leave that and let the Abyss just take care of it. Or the Abyss can go do cool stuff. but Either or. I mean, the Abbas is going to have a hard time actually moving around that, so it's probably yeah, just yeah. easier. Yeah, I was just thinking on current evidence, the Abbas is the one that brought the actual weapon. <laughs> that Blade of the Beast Slayer could... Uh... Nias was headstrong, but he dropped the sword on the hill. <laughs> he charged them with his literal head. He's just headbutted the Leviathan's bane. Yeah. All right, Real. and uh, we have John joining us for a little insight into how the game is going. Good. Uh, I had some questions for him. I... Oh, damn it. <laughs> Stupid nerve rolls. Damn it. Yeah. This is dumb. John, where were these yesterday? Come on. What's going on? Oh, 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 oh. Hang on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, welcome. welcome. They welcome, definitely John. can't see that Phoenix. But John's going to go correct that. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. someone, is, someone is wrong on the internet I must dash off and correct them <laughs> yeah um, come on then hit me with some questions or do I, do I tell you how it's going at the moment roll better <laughs> how do you roll a 6 up nerve oh, yeah. oh it's rubbish uh, so 
yeah, so from, from your deployment, obviously you, you split your force kind of in half, one on one half on one side, one, one half on the, on the other. And we've been mm -hmm. watching, trying to figure out exactly what your your plan is, given that you were you started up a little bit of unit strength on, on your opponent. Uh, and obviously you've made a mad dash towards getting rid of those those bolt throwers. Um, yeah, so tell us about what, what exactly are you planning on doing over here on the left side, obviously where all of the stuff is. Uh, delay. I just, <laughs> just delay as long as I possibly can. Um, I know he's uh, he's gone heavy on the left hand side, um, uh, and his unit strength is all there. He's he's out unit strengthening me all over the place. So I've got to I've got to just avoid him as much as I possibly can. I think, um, and then see what I'm, I'm left. If I can get around the back of him uh, next turn, then that will be an advantage to me. Um, wasn't sure they were in arc, but they probably were. Um, so, yeah. All, all delay, delay, delay. Um, and see what he leaves me. Um, um, I was hoping to just clear those bolt flares out and then be able to just turn. And then, you know, next turn I could be starting to to get into his back lines with some of those bits as well. But obviously, that's just not going to happen. Um, I can still do it to a certain extent. It's just not as easy. Um, but yeah. Uh, it... He's good at using his little units to try and choke me up, and I was trying to ping them off with uh, with, a, with the phoenixes, as you can see, um, with mixed impact. Um, if he comes in here, I'm hoping that I can then at least hit him with a couple of units uh, and try and take him off. But this this little pesky little river guard leaper unit, not dying, oh, at least being wavered, you know? Yep. Definitely put him in a rough position, giving him a lot of flexibility. Any other questions for John before he takes off? No. It's probably, it might be a good thing or a bad thing. It's, it might be a bad thing because they're like, well, what do you think? Oh, Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if we you're going to try to see. delay and, and counter punch, we will, we will see where the table ends up. Yeah, yeah that's it. You said you were going to do this. That was stupid, John. <laughs> All right, boys. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Right. Yep, good luck. See ya. So All we right. couldn't say it while he was here, um, but he doesn't seem to be doing the, like, just don't fight him and get everything across the board <laughs> um, or just fight a very small number of things and get across the board, but I guess we'll see. He said he was hoping to delay as long as possible, but he has moved up an awful lot <laughs> there with his screens for somebody who's trying to delay. Yeah, and here comes some... Yeah, I'm I mean... surprised the Panthers were in arc. Um, yeah. That seems like a mistake that John normally wouldn't make. But I didn't, I didn't check. I didn't check that unit. I didn't... Yeah. Ra they, range and arc, because I yeah. think they were always going to be an arc. He was pointed kind of directly that that way. Oh, uh -huh. he just put it back. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, no, they are in arc. Yep. Yep. And they are in range. Yeah, he gave them an easy out. They could have been to the slightly left. out of that. Or... Yeah, mm. yeah. Because yeah, because if the goal there is just to screen the phoenix, he he's got a good you know at least a half an inch. Mm -hmm. and that probably would have put them out of arc. I'm just turning them a little more. And and that unit was trapped, and now it's still, you know, could have bad it's stuff happen trapped. to it. It, but it's it is, least... but but if he can get this this eight wound river guard tree leaper into a position to cover where the flank of that unit will, of, of the worm riders will be when they regroup after killing uh, these Gur Panthers, then he might be able to keep it alive for another turn. Yeah, I don't know that he's going to be able to do that just because of the speed seven. Mm -hmm. um, that is the real big downside to like tree leapers versus wraiths. Sure. Um, sure. The speed seven makes it very hard to chaff in these situations. Because right here, like he's lost his pivot. The aloha could definitely fit, probably bottom side. You can, you could just use a mythicon to um, cover that, so you can't physically place the unit down. 
True. I take, guess you just yeah, lose, the, lose the lightning bolt for this turn by running him up there to do it, but might be worth it. I'm saying the Aloha can fit below where the Warmer is, so he's going to have to move them a little farther up. Yeah. Well, <laughs> useful. Mm -hmm. Or he just rolls Snake Eyes here. And... Right. What's our 20 inch on the Panthers? Which Panthers? They're behind the hill. The ones on the right by the swamp. Those. Yeah. Yeah, they're out. Are they in? What is. Oh, that's the Eternal, so the hill's going to be in the way. Yeah. does put a lot of pressure now on John's left. Yeah. yeah. That's the kind of mistake that um, he really did not need to make there. No. Yeah. And now he's sending a, the, a one of the Mythicans into the Urlohi with Hex, uh, just to put him on the ground. With the Depth Horror Eternal up to also help cover the Worm Riders, assuming they kill what they've hit, which they really ought to in the flank. Yeah. It's only 36 attacks, threes and twos. Right. 21 wins. Yeah, just double one it and it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Okay. Yep, makes sense. Go ahead and bring the ensnares all the way up. I mean, it gets them into scoring position. It'll get them there with a chaff unit next to them to help prevent a double charge on them next turn, and it puts them on a wall. And it is turn three. So this is the turn when, when shit happens. So, you know, it's time to do it. Mm -hmm. If you get to go first against an army that that much that's that much faster than you, and you've managed to get into range to hit them before they hit you, I guess you, you take that opportunity. Yeah, he's in. He's on a clock now. Well, obviously he's on a clock anyway, but he's on the <laughs> clock now with the 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 right flank coming in as much and as quickly as it is. Yep. He's got to try and get in there and kill as much of the left flank as possible, so he can turn and face it and not get caught. You know. Yeah. Yep. You got to turn as he, this as he nearly was. You got to fight this, turn this into an east west battle instead of north south quickly. Mm -hmm. Do the old toilet bowl. You just, yeah, just swirl around each other. Um, Some people would call that a yin yang, but we're classy here on Dash 28. <laughs> and as we've determined, when Jeff Trace does it, it has to go the other way. It has to go the other direction. That's right. Yeah. He has to <laughs> flank the other side always. Very good. Yep. I mean, it does. It does warm my cold, dead heart to see ensnares on the other side of the board. I was like, <laughs> on turn three. Yeah, they're one of those units. I feel like if they ever get to the board edge, you should just get another one stacked on top of it. And... It now hits on twos yeah. and has six up defense. Queen, we can move diagonal. <laughs> It's also, I don't know if you saw it, but there's a sneaky little Mythicon uh, fighting the left side Phoenix as well. Oh, so. He left that one in range too? Did he get <clears throat> Did he get wild charge caught out? Maybe. Was there a wild charge roll? <clears throat> uh, it might have been 13 inches, so it was just guaranteed. Very sneaky. 
Yeah, so once again, for someone who's planning on delaying on that side as long as possible, John got a lot of stuff really close. <laughs> yeah, I was um, I was kind of surprised he didn't just run away, to be honest. It seemed like he was yeah. getting prepared to just leave. Right, to just dart around the forest and be in the middle of the table yeah. instead. Yeah. Mm. They just kind of wandered forward, and now this has happened. So it's, it's nice because that's this is a lot more enjoyable than John running away. So. <laughs> right. Yeah, but this is, I mean, at least for me, this is exactly the position he did not want to be in, right? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, he's yeah. got a lot of stuff engaged. He doesn't have a concentration of force to pick up the things on the counter necessarily. Um, and the dam busters are kind of moving in as the second line. The Thule Mythicans are kind of up in all the business. Ector is somewhere being a dick. Like, it's this is exactly what Mike wants in a sort of engineering. And I feel in a little way that, like, John played into that. He kind of made half decisions here. And, you know, it's easy for me to quarterback this from back here. But he kind of wandered into the threat range piecemeal and is now getting picked up. Mm. or at least engaged um, before his right flank is ready to really come in and punish. So we'll see. So he's going to be out on that one. Yep. Yeah, John still has his whole, you know, alpha strike hammer line set up and ready to go, but I don't think this is the turn he wanted to pull the trigger with him. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not in the best place right now for him to be uh, going in. Mm -mm. Running into a forest against a bunch of ensnaring stuff. It's an Ector wind blast by the looks of it. Does no wounds, wounds, but does no wounds, but slides a little heat way back. I think they can still get to pretty much anything they might want to charge. It's not okay. great. So we're moving the combat. Gotcha. It's not great. That's yeah. only two. Only two from the horde. Yep. Being hindered on the wall as they are. Yeah. We'll see That's what the first can do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Good old UB. That's six more. Uh, pushing the Aloha, I think, also took the inspiring away. Yeah, it did. Oh, good point. Yeah, okay. All right, and that will pick up. Those Panthers in front of the Panther and Lancers. He does have to be extremely careful here with his reforms because the Aloha in the back still have range to the back dam busters on the left. Mm -hmm. um, and they can probably slot in there. Maybe not now with that. But he also can't leave an opening for something like the Panther Lancers to go to the rear of the Knucker. Right. Um, so he has to block off a lot of lanes. Yeah, it's going to be tricky there because obviously those panther lancers will be hindered but they can definitely just do the flank on their dambuster unit yeah and the other aloha can just go to the front i th maybe he might be able to do that uh, the ones on the right hmm. i think what he actually had to know. do there is just overrun both of them as long as you're touching like the the, red, the um yeah then they can't unit, it can't they can't then nibble around you so here's the Mythican on the Phoenix. Three hits, three wounds. 
All right. I will box keep around it. No box cards. Yeah, nope. Three rolled, so not going to pick it up. Didn't expect it to, but it puts it on the ground. Uh, something we didn't say, there's no withdraw in this game. So something to keep in mind. Thirteen hits is pretty bad. <laughs> oh, that was wounds. Never mind. Yeah, that was wounds. <laughs> now, how does he turn that? Well, Panther Lancers can't see. Though he can, but will easily be in the front. Uh, that way, his flank is Everything's covered. Blocked. Everything blocked. So, yeah, he can get a front charge from an Erlohian a Phoenix. Or, mm. not a Lodi Horde, but I don't think he's getting flanked anywhere. All right. And that will bring us to the bottom of turn three. The Panther Lancers top right, what is their range to the the Worm Riders out? 6, 12, 18, yeah, okay. Yeah, and here's Mike. Hey, 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 guys. Hey. Man, he's had Welcome. a few unfortunate rolls, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Oh, I forgot a combat. Got it? Dang. Um, yeah, so, so, yeah, so... Yeah. <laughs> That's a thing. Three leapers are still not dead, huh? They're still not dead. You got to roll dice. That's better than I was expecting. All right. Let me roll these. Let me roll these. He's making me roll them. He says, I'm not going to let you. Let you roll. Okay. Fine. It's going to be the. Uh, there you go. Again on the yeah. Four hits. Need fours. All right. Let me just roll a nerve for you and you can. Yep. All right. All right, John. That would have been the box cars that did nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so, uh, welcome, Mike. Uh, how do you feel the first couple turns of this game have gone in terms of your strategy and what you were expecting John to do? Oh, I, I feel like I had an advantage because he split his force, and that's good for me because most of my side is is all me. Um, I did use my mobility from the center to get back over with my guys. So that was more of kind of a bait, bait and switch. I, I deployed more center in the early part of the game. And uh, then he split his forces. And so I, I'm using that hill against him because he can't see over it. And um, I'm hoping that uh, I can go another turn without having to deal with the most of his forces. Uh, I think it went pretty well because he committed a lot into killing the bolt throwers, which don't score. So, I mean, they, they're really just bait for me so it, i feel like it's going well i mean outside of you know i'm now on the other side the dice are in my favor so it's he's he's failed on those <laughs> those poor uh long dead river guard or uh should be get, get you know the tree leapers should be dead but yeah living on borrowed time yeah i think it was the um getting the ocean bomb Worm Riders into that flank, which obviously John must have failed to see, because that just gave you such a an easy out, and obviously the River Guard then surviving and then being able to screen for him is just it's he didn't see that. Yeah, no. absolutely. Um, the the other thing was is if you look at the Elohi there on the right, I was actually just going to run forward anyway and probably be as close to that um, that Phoenix as possible and run outside of his vision if I could get there. Um, my goal was to be on the other side of the table and fight on his side of the table. So that would be in my advantage. So I don't have to chase that later in the game. And if mm -hmm. he chooses to come at me, at least I'm keeping him later in the game. Maybe I can use the, um, I was thinking I could use maybe the, the Thule Mythicans to keep the flyers down so they can't run away from me. Um, so, so yeah. So, I mean, I was, I was kind of hoping he went, he, he kind of would try to, run around me. That's why I put all my shooters toward the center of the table so that if he chose to just like, oh, this is a bad deployment and run away, I would be able to shoot him down as he went. Um, but he ended up 
not doing that either. And now he's, he just backed up, which I think also was in my favor. So um, it's interesting to see what he's choosing to do here. Um, yeah. He's, we, yeah. It's, it's, it's like, still at the far end. It was, yeah. I was kind of hoping you'd overrun both the ensnares and the river guard. Yeah. He touched him. He can't get around you then. I, I thought a lot about that. And I was thinking, well, let's, I, I really wasn't thinking he was going to do that, but it's not the end of the world, but okay. That, that, that sucks, but you know, I mean, I think I can get across the table, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised. I, I might live through that. I've I've lived through tougher, <laughs> tougher hits, but you know, it's we'll be see what happens. You know, um, I feel like I'm in a really good spot either way. So I think he's he's. I'm trying to take out his scoring units, so we'll see if that works in this next turn. Um, to just kind of limit the scoring that he can actually be on the side. Um, so we'll see. All right. Uh, you guys got any more questions for him, or should we let him get back to the game? Uh, no. Good luck. Good luck, and get back in there. All right. Thanks, All right. guys. We'll see. We'll see you at the end. Good All luck. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm guessing the top right Panther Lancers don't have range to the River Guard that got charged. No. Nah. 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 About twenty-three or. I, I don't think they can see him. That's the problem. Okay. They have range to the hills in the way. I yeah. thought River Guard, or the Tree Leaper, or sorry, the Dam Busters might be. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. The River yeah, Guard can't see is, is out of range. Yeah. 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 I, I got that. I'd have liked to see, I think I'd like to see, because he's put the LOI into the very, very, very much on the last legs River Guard. But he had a flank on the Nooker. Right? Is he Nooker high four or the high, five? High five. It's pretty tall. High five. Yeah. Oh, yeah. they could have taken a flank on a nook with the Aloha, and that gives you dread as well, which would be nice. Uh, he has a flank with the Aloha right now. He might just take that. Oh, he has touched the unit. We will find out what he does with them. Mm. Yeah. That's, yeah, I'd do that then. That's probably better. <laughs> but yeah, this this was the this was the thing we thought Mike had to be really careful about as he repositioned. I thought he was in a super good position and, and still is in a strong position meta wise, like uh, he has a bunch of stuff on or in John's half, and that's where you want these fights to happen. <laughs> um, because if you live, or even if you don't, like uh, you, you have a better chance of having the stuff there versus him having to come back to his own side, kill things, and then turn around and get to your side. Um, but I do think he gave those Panther Lancers a, a John, route what are you out doing? of a really bad position. Okay. I mean, if you don't kill them, they get a bunch back. <laughs> Please see it. Please see it. It's not, yeah. You beat Tom at Masters. You're better than this. <laughs> oh, don't be reminded of that game. Jesus. <laughs> hey. He's confused because he doesn't have a gang of six scoring like monsters running around <laughs> causing trouble. <laughs> It was yeah, yeah. They were they were a pain, but it was also like just it, yeah. I wasn't 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 best place. It's not a great matchup with Valen and uh, Nightstar because then like yeah, he had some quite okay. nice dice which were just infuriating at times. We're we're wrong. The knuckers height four. That's ah, I was uh, just checking. Yeah. Yes, it is height four. And the worm riders are also four, so we can't see. Right. So the Anybody want to catch Jeremy up? Well, just a moment. Like, am I am I crazy here? Like, are the Elohi just opening themselves up to a dam buster charge next turn? It yeah. feels bad. Yeah. I think um, if he's lucky and gets a three inch side shift, that might be what he's playing for. But I don't know if that's going to put the ensnares in the front. It should. But like, if you get a one or a chance. two, yeah, that. I don't, I don't understand why he's doing that. Because if the ensnares are in the front, then the dam busters are kind of locked in. I think they might not be able to get around it. Even though they're I mean, you could have done. You could have because he, he has sight on that pool mythican. It might have just been worth using attacking mythican and going for an over and flank into the um, worm yeah. riders. Yeah, if it, it's probably that's, that's, dead. 
That'd be a more efficient use, I think, of uh, of that unit rather than chasing a traffic unit and then getting um, jumped on. Yeah, I just I just feel like he's putting a unit whose only job is to not get hit first. <laughs> right? Like that is that speed ten angels, like don't don't let someone get the drop on you. Yeah. And he's yeah. trading that drop for River Guard tree leapers. Yeah, rather than this charge, I would have rather seen them just pivot ninety and go twenty the other way. If they were gonna do this, just get them out of there. All right. So, so the game thus far has been uh, they kind of deployed heavy to both heavy to the left Correct side. Um, yeah, something's got to stick that knucker. Mm-hmm. Something's got to stick the knucker, definitely. Because um, height six now, so nothing. It's not seeing anything. <laughs> that is one of my favorite things to do with the Phoenix. You just like right, you stay there. <laughs> you can't see anything. Well, it it makes sense when you see the Mantic model. Yeah, <laughs> like that is a big flaming bird. You <laughs> might not get to see past that little snake thing. Um, so John ran some very fast things around. Uh, the right flank quickly and went after um, Mike's bolt throwers up here in the corner. So far, he's gotten rid of one and wounded mm-hmm. the other two. Um, and then Mike, in response, shifted the couple of things he deployed in the middle back over to the left. And John left, uh, what, some Panthers in range of the Worm Riders that he probably didn't mean to. So a unit of Worm Riders that was kind of surrounded and probably going to go down on this turn instead charged into the woods and took out a chaff piece and is now a problem. And John is uh, attempting to reestablish containment of the Trident Realm forces, I guess. Yeah. It probably won't matter, but I don't like that the Alohai are touching that middle hill. Um, Because it makes him visible? To that mythic end. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah and that, that Mythican yeah. could very easily... It, in all likelihood, the the Alohai will get whatever charge they want anyway, but it does strip Nimble, which will limit them next turn. All right. John Quail, bottom of turn three. Should be just about done moving here. They are playing Invade. As you can see, their clocks. John has taken up about 27 minutes, and Mike has taken up about 36. What is the, the total time on clocks? Do we know for this tournament? 65 or 70, I'm guessing. Okay. So we're doing good. Yeah, I don't know if they're doing finish the phase or dice down or what. It's up for two. He sent us maybe the, the sixty-five minutes. Sixty-five minutes. Okay, I was about to say. I feel like he sent us the yeah. the players pack for this. It's it's, it's seppuku. When you clock out, you have to commit ritual suicide <laughs> on camera. Yeah. On camera. Just an, another player from the local meta just steps in behind him and cuts his head off part way through. <laughs> it's John, who was uh, who was top table of masters, has just charged an individual the wrong way uh, again. <laughs> Everyone does it. Uh, you know, that's not how you actually sound. charge individual, but it's fine. Yeah. Play Varinger. You learn how to charge individuals. They they align to you. <laughs> you center on you them. You center on them. Yes. Yeah. And individuals. The other one I get caught out a lot from people when I TO events is like individuals do have facings. They do matter. Like you don't they do actually triple. only get two or three pivots. Yeah, they yep. can't yes. just move there, and especially when terrain is involved. Like... Yeah, yep. And you do have to take that first pivot immediately. You don't get to like s- slide your cav hero away from something so that you can turn it to face the way you want mm-hmm. to see the thing to charge. Yeah, but the the um, they do have facings. Has popped up a number of times around you know Actor or others who have ensnare or something going on and 
It's like, no, no, they actually did charge your side. You don't turn to face. <laughs> right. So Riverguard Tree Leapers have finally died. Oh, uh, Leonardo, Raphael, pour one out. John's mortal enemy. For my right. all Tree Leaper army coming up. It's okay. Shredder's still alive. <laughs> yeah, you missed, uh, Jeremy. The thing you missed is that I'm starting another army out of the millions, which is the all uh, Ninja Turtle themed Tree Leaper army. With, uh, I think the best one we called out was uh, Shredder as Ector. Uh, and was that was that combat that he just didn't fail to do anything? Uh, the Phoenix on the Knucker, probably. One of the two. Yeah. One of those two. Okay. Uh, so he's winning here on Ow. fours with vicious. That's, gonna hurt. That's twelve. That is twelve on damn busters. Mm. Pathfinder. No team seventeen. If only he had an Earl Ohi there. Yeah, the shout is not Pathfinder, so it's as good as isn't it? Uh, they have the formation Pathfinder. Yeah, they just oh, naturally yeah, yeah, yeah. pathfind around on their Gura Panthers mm -hmm. like a bunch of right. jerks. Hmm. 12, 17? Did he get a kill? Uh, or is there a rally or something? Are they 16, 18? The They're 16, 18. I think that was a waiver. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Damn, Busters yeah. are 15, 17. Yeah, 15, 17. So did they just miss that they're dead? <laughs> he's, also, he's also if he if he thinks he's also not quite golem he's also got dread <laughs> there, there, there we, we go, go. <laughs> <laughs> we have to do some counting oh I'll admit there's been plenty of times when it's that close and I'm like looking at the rule book again just hoping for an extra rule I missed <laughs> like, do, do I have brutal no Hector has rally to damn buster right? yeah. I swear I saw what? it what do all these keywords do? Hold on, let me see if I can find them in the rule book. I'm sure they do something. <laughs> Mantic wouldn't have just put a bunch of words next to units that don't do anything. The, the most asked question. Right. Oh, God. What does this keyword mean? It means you'll get an aura in 2027. <laughs> right. Yeah. 10 hits there. That's real good. And then two is your rolling, I think. There's but yeah, six? I mean. Wait. Oh, they hit on fours base, not threes. Yeah. yeah. But that uh, sort of window out for the nimble Panther Lancers was, was huge. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's because you got known grass shield, which is why it's only uh, six damage rather than like mm -hmm. ten. Yeah, that's a fun, fun little piece of tech on those dual mythicans. Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's I, just, I, just I, had run this, I had to run a seductress with one. Yeah, uh, I, I I love a gnome glass shield on just like some annoying individual that's only job is to stop stuff off. And gnome glass wanderer it. is the most frustrating thing. Yes, yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of that. I thought that was an actual unit type you were naming <laughs> for a moment. I'm like, it might as well wanderer. be. It just what starts army with is it. that in? That's Joey's band name. Yeah. Local band name. The Gnome Glass Wanderer. They play uh, all Kansas covers. <laughs> you got me. That's definitely me. I was hoping Bachman Turner Overdrive covers only. <laughs> but, uh... Jeremy's asking what does Spellcaster level even do, and he knows what it does. Uh, it tells you how many alchemist curse you roll yeah it's right. how annoying how annoying yeah. is your alchemist curse and how bad is your host shadow beast you that sweet veil shadows three as well right. so you can feel even worse when you miss it oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> spend 30 points just to go second get shot off anyway right <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I just had a Siege of Augusta flashback. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. I have Veil of Shadows. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. All, it's all okay. six of my war engines get to shoot before you cast that. I, I only need one round. And it's the first <laughs> one. 
<laughs> so this All was right. sort of like both of them are kind of playing operations stop stuff off while one thing kills something. Um, yeah. The dual mythicans are, are getting in, the phoenixes are stopping stuff off. And yeah, it's going to be that race to see who who gets back over there. Yeah. So that's going to bring us to the top of turn four, bottom half of the game. Are we going to try just to stall the yellow high? That makes sense. Yeah. Oh, what else does the Dumbbuster unit do then? That I don't know, because that the Ensnares have a rear to the Lancers. So you've really got to hope to wait. Yeah, I mean, you could do a flank on the Phoenix, but like, do you care? I mean, it gets you towards the side of the board you want to be in with a forest between you and things that don't all want to charge I, for us. I don't I know. I don't see why you wouldn't take this multi-charge. Because you, you get a free reform. The Lancers are now going to have to hit your front. What? Yeah. How, are, how are they getting there? They don't they fly. fly. Oh, they, they do. Fly. Okay. Yeah. Oh. They jump very high. I, oh, yeah. I'm thinking of Gigas. That, yeah, I'm thinking <laughs> Gigas. That's that. the one I was thinking of. No, damn, damn busters are the other half of the Ninja Turtle jumping everywhere army. Yep. <laughs> They're just the, the chubbier ones. So, well, no, S STL hunters, what I need are... <laughs> really big Ninja Turtles. No, no, I'm going a different direction here. What I need are, uh, and we can scale these up and down. It's, it's the internet. We can use Blender. But I want just multiple Casey Jones's van. <laughs> On the on the base is the damn busters. I like to see the mythicans gone in to join in with the ensnarers, which is kind of like you're not trying to kill them. You're not you're clearly not trying to kill the yellow high. So wouldn't you be better off using that mythican to go tie down those panther lancers with Hector? Because then they can't yeah. just rear charge the ensnarers next. Yep. But it helped. You've got you've got an alright chance at killing them. Like Panther Lancers do not like um quality little individual attacks like that. But he's rolling with it. We're going. Alright, so here's Ector on the Lancers. Two wins. Not a lucky waiver. Now he just needs a lucky kill. Man, I'm really I just what is that Mythican doing? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Oh. Where are we at? Where did you want it to go? Into the into, uh, the, into these lanterns. Yep. Yeah, into the front. Locks it down completely. And they're also like they're the thing that wants to be fighting in this area. Like they yeah. have Pathfinder, they hit hard on the charge. They don't like taking a hit. They're a perfect thing to to punch with a uh, mythicant. Yeah. So. And I mean, they're basically just giving up the ensnares now, right? Like, unless he gets really damn lucky, but yeah. Is it Ector 48, the side? threes and threes with Vicious? And if the Aloha are around, they could have a lead. Yeah. Yeah, Ector's in the side, but that's not going to stop the charge. No. And since it's in snares, the stripping Thunderous doesn't matter. Is that a fail to wound on the Ear Aloha? No, he wounded. Is he crushed three? Where is it? It's a... Um... De it's a death horror, it's only defense power. Death horror eternal. Death horror eternal no, it, is it's crushing two. Low high. So yeah, failed it's to win on the low high. Oh god, yeah, I'm an idiot, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to remember to ask Mike why he didn't send the myth again into the front. Shame. Uh, Five hits. It's the start. The what, epic what, story. What, oh, never mind. <laughs> I was going to say, watch him one shot the Aloha and me. Uh, look like an idiot. 
Nope, they're good. That's set of fishes. All right. All right. That's a dead phoenix. That's definitely going to be a dead phoenix. Here's the snake eyes. Roll regen 40. <laughs> The knuckers should be to the front of the Erla High, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's one very dead phoenix. Very, very dead phoenix. It will rise again. <laughs> so now Next you can turn the dam busters to look at the backs of a lot of John stuff, but. The worm riders are kind of in the same position as the uh, ensnarers there. Do you turn them? Uh, what's the one wind or low height got for range and arc? Pretty good arc. Pretty yeah. much everything. Yeah. What it wants. It sees <laughs> yeah. what it wants. It's getting the knucker. Yeah, yeah. I'd probably put the panther lances into that. I think the left one's taking snares, the right one's depending on what the worm riders do. Oh, th wait. There's no withdraw. Is the mythic and mighty? It is no. not. So uh -huh. those answers can charge through it. <laughs> that is a great feeling. <laughs> Out of the way, Peck. Right. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it feels terrible when you think a unit should be mighty and you're like, you're reading really closely. Like the um, orc, like Morak special character isn't mighty. And I just remember like having to read it three times to be like, wait, he's not. Wait, what? He's, he's a big orc fighting. Ah. Oh. <laughs> How is he not mighty? He's got massive shoulder pads on. Yeah. So Mike's Mike's running out of pieces to stall things with. Yeah. But still Bro, has I mean, worm riders, some dam yeah. busters. He, he can't leave the dam busters where they are. Like that pivot can't stay. Because um, he's not in the forest. So it, it'd be very easy to dance around that. Yep. Well, there we go. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's going to be threats there soon. Yeah. <laughs> Probably with no ensnares. <clears throat> Is the wall close enough to at least hinder the Panther Lancers when they come no. back? No, it's too See, that's that's me reaching. <laughs> All right, so I feel like that's a question for for each of them. It's the region. So, the region. Yeah. We wanted to know, we, we we want to know why. Uh, I'm assuming the chaff. phoenix can't draw to the worm riders. You can't get another chaff. No. No. Okay. We want to know why John didn't put these Alohi into the flank of the Knucker, and we want to know why this Mythicin didn't go into uh, those lanterns. We know why he didn't do the Knucker. The Knucker's only high four, so he couldn't. Oh, that's right. He couldn't see. Yeah. yeah. That's right. And, and like, we want to know why he used a hard of Alohi to go nuke uh, a Dan Buster, like a River Guard troop. I mean, right. like, it worked because, out. Because Mike <laughs> didn't capitalize on it, at least in my mind, like, mm. it's, it's fine now. <laughs> right. He. It, he opted to get rid of a phoenix instead. Like they're they're in a great yeah. position now to sandwich these uh, ensnares and get a free reform, which is going to look yep. pretty sweet. But mm -hmm. That's also, I, the I, of turn four. I do have to say I'm a I'm a big fan of the icon based UV battle armies that Mike has and some others use. 
because they remind cleaner. me they remind me of the old warhammer battle reports <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, i love a i love a good like icon based version i think tom sometimes you use them or nah. maybe not no someone else does okay it's awesome. but yeah i love them it's very popular in america isn't it? Well, american players to use that Ooh. i haven't seen so many british people doing it it's our history channel influence coming oh right i think it was pat allen when he played you used them yeah and that's yeah. why i'm remembering you in a game with them on the board but it wasn't you <laughs> so fair enough he has arc on the air aloha maybe is that what he's looking at i guess he did oh jeez. that's right. perfect that's, that's the unit you want there yeah yep and that's the air aloha that was not wavered by the death Horror eternal so hmm. no withdraw turn corkscrew shenanigans required just to fly over the guy and punch him. That is a shameful performance by that Depth Horror Eternal, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's, that's some payback for the Tree Leapers living two turns longer than they should have. <laughs> um, charging into that guy to ground him and just not even grounding him. So. Or a Lohi into the flank of the Knucker. Along with the Lancers, you can run right through the Mythican. Where are the Lancers in the flank? Interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> so he's going to have some, hopefully, from John's side, you know, not hopefully from Mike's side, but hopefully from John's side, there's going to be some utility pieces and two real units left on the board for him at the end of this. Mike's going to have turn five. He'll kill the Alohi with the Dam Busters. Mm -hmm. And I kind of hope they live through bottom five. I mean, part of me is like the Panther Lancers just back up. <laughs> I mean, that would probably open them to Dam Buster charge, so you wouldn't want to do that. You need to protect yourself, but like at some point soon, he just has unit strength and just leaves. Go, right. Goes to the other right. side of the board. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, like, I was thinking, do you just want to walk? It's turn four, but do you just want to walk away right now? <laughs> well, like, you take this turn, you kill, you know, you don't want a knucker running around. You don't want some other, you want to trap some stuff. But then just, yeah. like, some amount of his just... army can just peace out. <laughs> Drop the mic, walk away. Yeah, <laughs> just, yeah I, I, they, they homer back into the hedge. Right. basically like <laughs> and you know it's dangerous to do that against these units um because they they fly and nimble and whatever and you don't want them picking up pieces for free but if you've got some of them locked down and you're not going to win those fights necessarily going forward yeah um, the I, other after this turn is probably the just go yeah, the, the other option is like he has two unit strength just chilling on the other side of the board. You just try and kill everything he has. <laughs> that looks like the uh, Abbas on Panther is going into that other Mythican in the middle of the board, top center of the board. Yep. That should be pretty much Abbas all is so that. good. She, she, she gets looked over quite a lot of the time in Brazil because all the other characters are also like good and scotty, but she's, she's really good value for money so quick like that mm -hmm. just being on that speed versus the um 120 for effectively a flying hero yeah yeah it's really strong with with three up melee and six six attacks is vicious like consistent enough and then vicious aids that yeah. consistency yeah 12 14 9 resolve i know it's only defense four but it's just enough that like you can go into a dragon and the dragon probably will kill yeah. you. Yeah, as long as you avoid sort of lightning bolt spam, but even like mm. that's the thing, their danger. Shooting, you have the individual, you can hide and cover, you can do a lot of tricky stuff. So, yeah, I like them. There's 21 wins on the ensnares. <laughs> that's just from the rear. Yeah. yeah. Uh, elite and vicious panthers in the rear is. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> against the low defense 29 unit. total that's it that's exactly what you want to be hitting in stars with yes oh here it comes it's got, it's got, it has to happen okay 
No. Okay. <laughs> That's one of those. I don't drum roll. I don't. I roll that as fast as possible to, <laughs> right. to get the right. stress done. Like the whatever you do, don't don't, d- don't let you be realize what what's about to happen. Quick, just roll, just roll, <laughs> just roll. So he did back up the lancers. Uh oh. Well, I guess this gives him a choice when he mm. spins the the Alohi, whether I just feel like backing up the Lancers. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that it's even a choice because you have a Mythican that can just ground the Alohi anyway. Like it's, it's right yeah. there. Yeah. And Actor. So he's going to get both. Yeah. He, if, he if charges the... Three. Yeah, he is. So yeah, you send... Hector and the Mythigan into the Alohi and kill the Lancers with the Dam Busters. Or no, you just send one into the Alohi and then double charge the Lancers, make them dead, reform to face, and you're chilling. Mm. Sure. The Alohi already have five wounds. If you get lucky with those two characters, you can pick both up. Yeah. No snakes on the Knucker. No snakes it's on the Knucker, so there goes the Knucker. No snakes right. on the snake. There are two now. We have an Alohi on the Worm Riders. We have a Alohi Horde with a uh, flank charge on the Depth Horror. And we have the Abyss. That's what you get, Depth Horror. That's right. <laughs> you, you fail to ground your target. This is what you get. Shame. It's even, yeah, it's even worse than Nias failing to kill a bolt thrower in one shot. Fish soup. <laughs> I feel like you just overrun the Lancers here, take the risk that you roll a four. That's probably what he did. Or he sidestepped. Yeah, that makes sense. That covers it. Not in the forest. Nope. Beautiful UB forest that nothing like what anyone plays on. Uh, here's the Erlohi into the front of the Worm Riders. Three hits, three wins. Or they crush one thunder one. Uh, oh, an Erlohi? I forget. Crush two. They're crushed two. Crush two, yeah. None of this Dracon nonsense. Just crush it. <laughs> Uh, only a seven, they're going to be okay. Support Depth Horror Eternal. It's about to have to think about its life choices really seriously. For 19 wins. Uh, a brief moment here. <laughs> Begin to realize I should have just stayed in the seat. Right. Grass stuff, really overrated. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's something to be said that, like, how good would Trident Realms be if we ever fought on their battlefield? Everyone's speed, too. Like, I want to see your Basilian Knights <laughs> <laughs> charging through, you know, 30 foot deep water. And that takes off the uh, Mythican. You're running decidedly low on units. Hmm. Yeah, so that's going to leave Ector, a Mythican, Dam Busters, and Worm Riders. Well, Worm Riders should have four wounds on them. Should. That is going to bring us to the top of turn five. Yeah. Uh, our clocks are pretty close together now, 45 minutes to 42 minutes. Um Given how much stuff is on the table, clocks are not going to be an issue. Now, currently, John's got one, two, three, six points scoring. And Mike also has, I think, six points scoring. Hmm. But John has a whole lot of other points that he could score with, and that's all Mike's got left. So, not looking great. 
here in the top of turn five. Okay, double charge the Lancers, kill the Alohi first. Hmm. It might actually just be worth not countering with the Worm Riders and just seeing if you can get out of that wood. I don't think you can. He's not playing with draw, either. No. Ah, so if they were playing with withdrawal, he would, he would have some charges and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Try to get into so the defense for yeah. Alohi. Yeah. Okay, and they have There's fixed the worm, worm Riders worms, yep. <clears throat> All right. And here come the Dam Busters into the front of the Alohi with five wounds on them. Uh, what are you going to try to do with Ector? Punch this Urlohi? I think you won't try and do, do this. anything. Uh, I think you try to try and do the punk lances then. Yeah. Try to get both. Hmm. Try to get both, yeah. So the real struggle is going to be the Phoenix is now like perfectly free to actually heal. Mm -hmm. um, so if he fails to kill anything here, the Phoenix can start doing its old job. Yep. And there goes Ector into the side of the Panther Lancers. So, uh, and that's all Mike's got left on the board, so we can stay zoomed in here. That's our regen. That's going to be a regen on the Worm Rider, so that takes two wounds off, brings him down to two. And then we will see where he wants to start for combat. He's got three. The Worm Riders countercharging the Alohi in the forest. The Dam Busters into the Alohi. And the characters double charging the Panther Lancers. All right, so there's the Worm Riders. They are crushed too, so six wounds. Six wounds, yep. Not it. <clears throat> You're not that guy. Nope. Yeah. I think you then do the other low heat that might take inspiring out. Or not. Mm. Okay. Nope. Yeah, she should done the other high first. Yeah. The other the other high might be in. It, it's UB. I have I am terrible at UB measurements. Uh, uh, no, he's it's just out. out. So yeah. He's gonna kick himself if he misses the second nerve roll. Put the five wounds, nine, 14. That would have been a wave, wave, right? Yep. <clears throat> okay. Good enough, I guess. Uh, uh, and then, yeah, 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 good enough. And then Dan Busters into the front of a Loki with five wounds already on them. Bang. Ooh. All right. I think they're dead. And not snakes, yep. so. Yep, <laughs> nothing to do but turn around. It's going to force the Earl high in there. Yep. Uh, the fun thing, um, the Panther Lancers can still just back off four and a half inches. They, they don't, the five one waiver doesn't really matter because he can just take them and score with them yeah yeah they're now just going to moonwalk out of there yeah and, and the individuals can chase them and keep trying to take them off the board or go try and be useful somewhere else yeah right um, you can't uh, withdraw can you... if you're attacked on both sides but you can just back up yep. you can't just disengage and back up okay that's what i was yeah. about to ask Yeah, there's there's some sort of like people should go reread the rules around disengage and such because there yeah. are some situations where people uh, our league plays no withdraw and people will sort of think that means like you can't leave combat. Right. It's like there are still a lot of ways to leave combat or even charge other things. It just means you can't withdraw. Um, right. And so we we had a few people being like, but it means no withdraw and it's like yes but you can just right. back up 
or right. since, I'm a cherry since, face and I can just like pivot that. and go. <laughs> <laughs> right. Since we've all spent several years confused about whether disengage and withdraw were two different things or not. Yep. Um, yep. Might as well. I think all Mike needs here is like four rounds of double ones and he, and he can win. Yeah. <laughs> so the Phoenix should hop over, heal five, the uh, Pencil Lancers, keep them fresh. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that oh. Abbas is in. Doing work. <laughs> yep. From the top right. RKO out of nowhere. <laughs> Killed the, again. Bachman Turner Overdrive. This Abbas is taking care of business. <laughs> killed killed two Leviathan Spain in the top. Took Sorry. out one Thule Mythican. Is it Hector? She's against yeah, her. That's Hector, going yeah. after the, okay. Hector yeah. in the rear though. So yeah. No so I was hoping no she was going after the other Thule Mythican and was just doing a whole, like, <laughs> all Thule must die. Right. Taking out all the cephalopods. No glass wanderer playing soon at a bar near you. Doing real good on them regen rolls. Nail it. <laughs> I would say bring the ancient, but this ain't fixing it. Oh, he got his two wins. They're stuck. Yep. Abyss on Hector. So it felt like a tough matchup for Mike. Um, I know there were some some decisions in the in the thick of things that would have gone differently from some of you, but it did. You know, it felt like it might have always gotten to this point where it's just hammers hitting <laughs> and taking stuff off. Um, but it's been it's been swingy in the middle there. It looked really good for Mike in the middle turns, I think. Yeah, I think with some different reforms, like not allowing the Lancers to get that flank in the Dam Busters, yeah, would they have got made this out. a very different game. Yeah, they got out and took yeah. off a, a piece he needed to do work. Um, yeah. I liked the I liked the Worm Riders getting into the position they got into. That mm -hmm. was a great charge he saw there that <laughs> yeah. John had missed. Because they're still just sitting in that woods, like, fighting it out. I mean, they're going to be gone now but they got to turn five from a position i didn't think they'd see turn end of turn three yeah they were, <laughs> right. they were in trouble right. trouble at, in trouble in turn two and you know they've done well to be there at the end of five yeah yeah invade when you have like a significant unit strength advantage and a speed advantage it, it's rough especially if your shooting can't make up for the difference mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. Be one thing I'm going to ask Mike, because um, I thought one thing that he could have done was deployed central with the rocks pivoting his flank on the other side um, and work with the Leviathan Bane. Yeah, Just, yeah. and for, kind of force John to be centric itself, which kind yeah. of wastes his speed advantage for the most part. I mean, it's it's always a question on how that would actually work, but I do... I do very much like when you have a war machine advantage, there's sort of two ways you kind of sh try and shut down a route to you, or you try and do most of your fighting and maneuvering within the kind of shadow of that so that they can just take free shots part of the game and you can defend them almost for free with the units you have over there. Right. Um, you know, Thule, Mythicans, Ector, et cetera, they're great at just stopping people from engaging war machines while they just keep shooting. Mm -hmm. But I usually don't play like ballista style war machines. It's usually the the volley guns or something like that, which are much better at yeah picking up a unit that you dedicate shooting to. I've been playing with shredders, which definitely are a little bit different than the Vizens Bane. Mm -hmm. 
because uh, the shredders just occasionally get 20 hits. It, it happens. They just do rack in things. <laughs> yeah. Is that with the formation? So there's the redeploy. Yeah, that's the redeploy too. But just like you roll eight dice and eventually you're going to spike like a six or seven hit roll. I feel like we're just renaming you Joey Redeploy. Because <laughs> your kingdom's I... a min list is based around that too, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I could probably write a Dash 28 article on why I think Scrying Gem is a top three item in the game. Oh, oh snap. I'd have to get a lot more drunk for that. <laughs> that used to be the joke in our scene, is that everyone who started playing Kings of War took Scrying Gem for like their first three months and then never <laughs> again. <laughs> and it was the yeah. like... Well, Scrying Gem is the only item that requires your skill cap to be higher to gain its value. Mm -hmm. um, all other items to only impact that unit. Um, I still wouldn't say it's the best. I think Orb of Towering Presence is the best item, but uh, that's what I like about Scrying Gem, because it's all about you, the player, and what you can get out of it. Mm -hmm. Reforge Orcs Army next? I thought about that. Re redeploy. Uh, that. That was actually what this was supposed to be. I was going to head swap Orcs on all the uh, Warriors of Chaos. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I was like, nah. And then I played Varinger, and Varinger just too much fun. <laughs> you, got, it, you got a taste of the good stuff and can't go back to Reforged Orcs after Varinger. Yeah. <laughs> you make a Chimera Duelist, and you just... Yeah. It's great fun. It's so fun. Yeah. That army for me is just everything you want it to be. Like, it doesn't always work, but it does exactly what it's supposed to. <laughs> I, it's perfect, especially in like a GT. Um, like I was at Peachtree and it's in a bar. So it was the exact right army to have at that situation. Okay, so what's going on here where things are getting picked up? Not really. And, and nothing got picked up, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> I meant I meant for in John's turn. <laughs> yeah. Um I think right. you just don't risk anything. Leave the Aralohai there. Everything. How much unit strength does he have over right now? He's got three, so he needs to get one Aralohai back over. Yeah, John's got... He's got six from six fully on that side. Yeah, and just you wanna, three, seven. You wanna, yeah, you won't want to risk it, so you'd want to keep four back that you know aren't going to die. Yeah. And then just have fun with the rest of it, I guess. And yeah. entertain the crowd. Send it in. That, I guess that's what he's doing. Or maybe the Lancers, Lancers stay back. Lancers more right. lock. Whoop. Here they go. Yeah. Peace out. Yeah, dun, make, make dun, it safe. Dun, dun. Yep, there they are. Money in the bank. There's the... Here comes that out of hero. <laughs> Double charge. So she got Hector. She gets Hector. Yeah, she's again. charging Hector again. Buy Hector again. <clears throat> Where'd the Thule Mythican go? He's over here. In there as well. oh, okay, next to him. Gotcha. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay. Side by side. Forgot to do his heal. Oh, well. We're up to 10, 11 with Dread. Fourteen now. So they're on snakes. Yeah. I like that there's just two Ur Alohi fighting like side by side. <laughs> like you don't see that that often. Just doubled in with the two of them. And not snakes, so that we'll pick up the last of Mike's unit strength. <clears throat> No, the abbess is just trying to show off. <laughs> Freaking abbess. No wounds. Woo. Yeah, that's right. Chill. <laughs> Box car. Oh, 
All right. I guess they could roll for seven, but uh, yeah, I mean, no, right. Mike has no unit strength and uh, no ability to take all of John's stuff. I mean, that is one way to win invade. <clears throat> That's the Vaseline. Way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is technically a turn seven rolled. Do we want it? <laughs> uh, do we want it? Are you not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> How not Varinger of him? Are they waiting for us to give my thumbs up, thumbs down? Like, yeah, you. Someone can just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There we go. There it is. Game over. The Basileans can take a knee and do whatever kind of praying crap they do, and just call it. A... <clears throat> just call it. The the he hegemony will record this as a total victory, even though Ecker yeah. is just walking away from it. Right. All right. So Let's I apologize in advance. I have to duck out in a couple minutes. So All when right. I leave in the middle of something important, John or Mike is saying, it is not be me being offended and leaving. <laughs> I just actually have to leave. So. You know, like flipping Stay the table. Your... Yeah, you it's less not... lost. I always feel bad in meetings or something else where, like, you're saying something and someone leaves, and you're like, do it, "What did I do?" Yeah. He's actually <laughs> going to Mike Grant's house right now. Yeah, right. He's not that close. He's a couple hours away. <laughs> but because you're so gotta leave early. But for that West was fun. Coast, hey guys, West Coast region, a couple hours away is local. Yeah, it's true. Hey guys, welcome back. Hi guys. Uh, so thanks for thanks for letting us watch the game. That was a great game. Uh, congrats to John on the win, and I guess for taking home the top prize in your own tournament. Good job, John. <laughs> it's thirty kudos. It's all it is. It's all for fun. Damn it. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, uh, so, but, but we did have. Uh, we did have a couple of questions for you guys, I think, about, about a couple of things that, that happened. Uh, we want to start with, what, uh, asking Mike or yeah, uh, about know. the Mythic in charge? Yeah. So there was one that we saw with the Pantheons when they're going to re the, the Ensnarers. You had a, a Mythic that stood around and you threw it into the Alohai, yeah. and we were just quickly thinking you could have tagged the Pantheons in the front and the Kag it around then. You'd, you'd have saved your... Um, yeah. The Ensnare Horde. Yeah, so that gosh, John and I were talking about the same thing back there. It was like a gamble <laughs> of how mo how fast his army is and trying to ground him and trying to keep him. And if I could sustain some flanking damage and use my some some resilience to hold him, but it just didn't work out. Most of the time, I really am counting on not getting wavered and uh, and having some mobility. I can change targets, and that's really been the success of the list. Um, and he literally wavered all the all the great toys that I have, uh, and so yeah, it was fantastic. I mean, and and it was everything was a choice of how do I deal with this speed ten? Like how how do you get around all this? And it's it's a mess. It's everything gets you so many flanks, and I'm uh, uh, trying to look a turn ahead is always a challenge too. Uh, it's like okay, if he's going to be right here next turn, do I stop him right here or do I I try to? Uh, and I didn't, nothing paid off <laughs> as I couldn't get any uh kills. So, it's uh, probably worth to say that you just ended up. I think after those, uh, after those uh dam busters went down, it was you were then kind of fighting on uh instincts, weren't you? And it was just, yeah, it was, yeah, and that was the big thing. Games, you just, There's, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. just to, and because I, I obviously made a mistake on, on the section where I should have overran, uh. I was more concerned about being flanked right there, obviously, since I was doing so much posturing because of the alone. You're talking about the ensnarers, aren't you? You're talking yeah, about trying to block the yeah. charge and the flank in the first yeah. place. Yeah. And that, yeah. that ended up being the biggest significant error of the game. 
um, which I needed to not make that. <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. Well, Kings is very often not who makes the first mistake, but who made the last one. Because we really felt that John had made a huge mistake mm. letting the Worm Riders get in and actually escape. Because like, if John was able to maintain just killing the Worm Riders and the two Tree Leapers, he could have coasted a unit strength victory just off of that. Mm -hmm. um, and then he just walked towards you. I have to agree. I have to agree. <laughs> it was that, I, that panther, those Panthers, I didn't need to do that. They weren't doing anything there other yeah. than stopping uh uh some dam busters hitting the the um uh the phoenix uh I, it was just one of those throwaway units and luckily my mistake was with a with a chaff unit his mistake was a 300 point unit wasn't it yeah well um yeah joey spent the whole cast basically encouraging john not to fight <laughs> and to just leave and get everything up the right hand flank and yeah. unit strength him. So boo, boo. <laughs> and and if you had done that in your own tournament for the win, <laughs> that would have been, would have been. Ab absolute shame. <laughs> I'm already the bad guy. I'm already the bad guy today. Oh, yeah, we're, like, we're not even sure your bracket is up to date. We think that like whoever actually made it to the final round, you just took their spot, like in a you know, Tekken or Street Fighter, like you just emerge in your final form and you're the boss. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah that's it. You know, yeah. Well, the last continue, yeah? You yeah. switch players at the last game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. as, as much as I find the fast armies really tough, I still think um, I would love a second try at this. I think I, maybe I need another try at it, but, but I did okay against the 14 Alohi and I did okay against the 11, what was it? No, 8... Eight scorch wings. Scorch wings. I mean, I, yeah. I felt like I feel like these this flying speed list is still quite a thing. But I think I might have a chance at this. I don't think it's. I mean, it's an uphill climb, but um, I think it's still. I wouldn't quit on it. You know, I think I think this is just a, a play mistake. You know, I think I, you got to the finals, so yeah. So I, I think I it was good. I, think it was good I did. I wanted to ask you your opinion on your deployment, on whether it was mm -hmm. worth uh, leaving the Leviathan Bane outside of your army. Or if you should have deployed center and keep the rock as your flank to pivot around instead. So there was two debates. Um, I, when when I and practiced this or thought about it, uh, I, I really was thinking more about the map, and I was actually hoping to win the bottom section of this yeah. map. So my all my whole thought process all. is yeah, I, I didn't. I I really never got a chance to even think about playing on the top part of the table, um, and mm. really I just wanted him to bait over there and i think actually um that rock is a big part of it and so because of the all most of the maps that john created <laughs> i don't know who created them i'm just joking um but they they, they have quite a significant uh, uh reduction from uh shooting threat zones so i really was concerned with putting anything in the center of the table uh at that point i mean i really thought that channel down the side would have been great so maybe just playing all together with the shooting stuff might have been smarter and the list was designed with that in mind like maybe putting i don't know if, if you're looking at the the trees in the top left hand side of the table i was thinking about putting them in there and using that the whole game um mm -hmm. and i think using that all condensed would have been great but i think i would have struggled to get across the table i don't know i think you're right uh it would have probably played better for sure yeah all right uh, anything else and anything else we wanted to ask these guys i think that that covers pretty much everything yeah, I, I was just going to say it's been it's been an interesting tournament. I mean, some really good players taking part. Um, didn't promote it well enough, unfortunately. So nobody actually knew about it, which is a bit stupid. But we still got a few people. There was really some really good competitions and really interesting results and some armies and stuff used on it. So I would recommend guys go and have a look at what kind of things people throw. To actually, no, I haven't seen the H Scorch for sure. Don't look at any of those armies. It's just it's just filth. Um, but there are some interesting choices. And then you can see by that, like, uh, the knockout tree as well, there was some really big matchups, you know, um, and some interesting winners all the way along. Um, I have to admit, the only reason I got here is because I got bloody lucky. You know, I got lucky through this game as well. You know? uh, so you don't need to be good. You just need to be lucky. Um, or run your own tournament and make your own match. One of the two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sadly, I'm neither. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Okay. Well, thank thanks, John, for organizing and running the event and for letting us stream the final game here. And congrats to you on winning. 
And thanks so much to both of you for, for letting us watch your game. Uh, it was it, it was a good time. I had, a, I had a great time watching it. Well well played by by both of you. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Tom and Joey and Britton for hanging out with me and uh, watching the game. And uh, everybody at home for coming and checking us out. Hopefully we'll be doing a few more of these a little more regularly. Uh, I think Mike Zellmeyer is planning on running a, a UB tournament. So if you're interested in that, uh, yeah. go to the Facebook uh, Kings of War Universal Battle Group and look for posts by him uh, with, with information on it. We'll probably be streaming some of those games as that event starts developing. Um, Quick question. Yeah. Are we taking yeah, bets yeah. that Mike wins that one? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess if he's playing, like, you kind of always bet on Mike to win. He's not as much of a dick as me, so he, he should be all right. I don't know. He ran the nine by nine. This smells so nice. <laughs> Although I have to admit, Mike, Mike is, you know, he's a really good player. He does lots of really good practice, but he's always the bridesmaid recently. He always seems to just lose a game when he should have won it. And he's just, we'll see. But no, yeah, tournament. Yeah. Uh, that's starting on, that is the first week of April, I think. That's the first start of that. So get yourself signed up now. Yep. So go check that out. And um, if you're interested in checking out more of these, feel free to subscribe to our channel so you'll get some notifications uh, as we schedule live stream games. Um, and I think that that's pretty much going to wrap it up. So uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, until next time, I'm your host, Mike Atkins, saying you stay safe out there. And we will see you next time on Dash 28 Live. Bye, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.